Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in this episode we are very inappropriately sitting on the runway of 11 left at Tucson, Arizona, but I am going to be showing you guys a very awesome pop-out uh, window tool that allows you to truly enable touchscreen experience for the touchscreen controllers such as in the Longitude and the TBM 930. Stick around guys because you're really going to enjoy this whether you use touchscreens or not. Make sure if you guys can that you join us at Flight Sim Expo 2023. That's right. Overkill Simulations is going to be present this year, guys, at the Lone Star Museum in Houston, Texas. If you guys are interested in joining us there, be sure to check down the description below. There is a coupon code that can save you guys a bit of money uh, using my personal reference uh, to get you there. Again, that'll save you a bit of cash in your Flight Sim Expo 2023 experience. This is going to be June 23rd through the 25th of 2023. Uh, again, in Houston, Texas, at the Lone Star Flight Museum. I went a few years ago in Las Vegas, and they are an absolute great time. There's some very, very informative and educational seminars to help better your flight sim experience, as well as a ton of developers of both hardware and software that you guys actually get to try out, essentially a try before you buy experience, as well as talking with the developers themselves and uh, finding out what the products are all about. So again, guys, it's going to be Flight Sim Expo 2023 in Houston, Texas. I hope to see you guys all there. Don't forget to use my coupon code that you can find down in the description below. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. Okay, guys, so as I said, today we are going to be talking about MSFS Popout Panel Manager. Now, this program has been out for quite a long time. However, um, it was not to a point where I felt that I could comfortably do a video on it because I had a bunch of different issues with it. Sometimes the camera views wouldn't save. Sometimes it would just get buggy. It just was very cumbersome for me to use, at least in my personal experience. However, with the latest update that developer made for uh, compatibility with Sim Update 12, he seemed to have improved a lot of things, and I'm finding this program to now be extremely fantastic. Now, who is this program for? I would say, given the fact that Microsoft Flight Simulator has done a pretty good job with the latest update in Sim Update 12 in remembering the location of pop-out windows as long as you do not close them at the end of your flight, um, I would say the largest benefit to this is it makes touchscreen compatibility an actual thing. Right now, what I'm referring to is up to previous moments and even now currently, if you were to only use the touchscreen uh, or the uh, pop-out window manager that is built into Microsoft Flight Simulator and you try to put, for example, the touchscreen controller. Let me move this down so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Like this is a touchscreen controller. If you were to try to put this window onto a touchscreen, you would find that when you try to actually use it with a touchscreen, it doesn't work. At best, you might highlight a button, but the input never sends correctly to the simulator. Pop-out manager tool actually allows you to enable that feature as well as quite a few others. Uh, everything from window size adjustments to getting rid of the title bar uh, to finite movements of said windows, as well as remembering the location of the windows the next time you launch, as well as automatically being able to launch with the simulator. So let's go ahead and get started with this because it is a very awesome tool and quite simple to use. Now, previously you've had to use custom views and things like that. However, uh, I have found that is no longer an issue for me. So here is my default view that I personally like to use in the TBM 930. Now you can see you have a couple of different options here uh, as far as how to manipulate the windows. Left click uh, will put you into the uh, panel management or the actual selection. Uh, shift left click will remove the previous selection and shift or uh, control left click will uh, basically save the selection. So we're going to start out here in just a second. First thing we do is create a profile for the TBM 930. As you can see, I already have one created for the longitude. So we're going to go TBM 930, a brand new selection. Now, what I'm going to do is when I hit start panel selection, this main window is going to disappear. So again, we're going to close here. 
And for this instance, I'm gonna do two displays just to show you guys the feature capability of it. But really what I'm after when it comes to the TBM specifically is the touchscreen controller. So I'm going to click on the PFD and I'm going to click on the pilot side TSC or touchscreen controller. Now I'm going to go control, hold control and hit left click again. And that now creates, you can see our two windows. Now we are not quite set yet. Let me do something here. I need to set up the touch screen that I want to show you guys with this particular feature. Now this is not the window that I'm actually going to be using in my sim, but I do want to show you guys some of the features. So I'm going to basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this touch screen controller and the PFD and I'm going to put them side by side. It's going to look very goofy guys. Again, I'm doing this for your benefit. So bear with me. Rather than having to put multiple displays up on the screen here, I'm trying to do this all in a single window. So give me just a minute and we're gonna go display capture and I need to remember which one this thing actually is. I believe it is this one. Let me add that. And let me see what we get here. Uh, interestingly enough, it is not populating anything. So I'm kind of curious why, oh, because it is below that. Now let's see, there we go. Okay, so it is there. So for now, let me just make this a bit smaller. I will make it larger when it's time to actually showcase everything, but I wanna make sure you guys can see everything else as well. So now on the pop-out manager tool here, I'm going to come down to the bottom where it says start pop-out. And then I'm just going to sit back and wait for a second until I see my two windows displayed. Now you can see the PFD automatically uh, added to the window that I am referring to here. This one is actually directly in front of me beneath my primary window. It is this window here. Uh, but we need to find the touchscreen controller. So let me see where it put it. It might be actually under this. It is not, interestingly enough. Where is it? It didn't say it had an error, so it's around here somewhere. I just have to track it down figure out what window it went to. Oh, it actually did put it on the right window. It put it on the window. You know what? I'll just show it. Let me figure out how to do this for you guys. So this is going to get a little weird, so bear with me. But let's just show it. So I'm going to reduce this one here, and I'm going to add another one, so bear with me, guys. I wasn't exactly set up to do it quite like this, but we're going to do it now anyway. So display capture, display capture three, and I need to figure out which one this is on. I believe it is that one. Yes, it is. Let me hit OK. All right. So now these are both, both of these that you are seeing are touch screens. This one is a smaller one. I'll show you this one here is a smaller. I believe this is an eight inch touch screen. And this one over here is a very large uh, 11, or excuse me, I believe this is a 15 and a half inch uh, touchscreen monitor that is directly in front of me. And the this one here is um, off to the left side of my cockpit. I will try to remember to post a picture of the cockpit so you guys can see all of this. Now let's talk about the cool features. So first off, here's the biggest thing right out of the gate, guys. If you want to, I can now activate anything I want Oh, no, I can't. Not yet. Let's come back up here yet. So now coming back to here, let me... We're going to hide these two for just a minute. And actually, let's do a window capture. That will probably work a little better for this. Let me add that. And we're going to move this up top. There we go. That's probably going to be better for you guys. Let me just throw it to the top. Come on, get up there. There we go. Okay. So hopefully this all works out. There we are. And I will hide this window momentarily. So you can see that I wasn't quite prepared with how intricate this video was going to be. So first off, you have always on top option. This is great, for example, on the longitude. I have both of the touchscreen controllers mapped. I have the pilot side, which as you guys know, controls on the longitude, it controls all of the features on the PFD, allows you to, you know, else as well, setting your speed bugs and things of that nature, uh, it exists on the left side, or at least your CDI nav source of things. 
Um, where on the TBM 930, I'm not as worried about. It. I only need the single panel. Okay, so, but if for any reason, what I did on the Longitude is I put my PFD, as you guys are seeing here, I put my PFD here, um, but I also, on this screen on the Longitude, I have the touchscreen controller to the right side of it. And uh, that's just one way of doing it. Basically, I split my 15-inch monitor in half, and uh, I can show you guys in another video how I set that up, but it works out really nice. But what we want to do here, so if you want to do it always on top for any reason for just that specific window so it doesn't get buried behind a larger window, that would be a good reason to do that. Uh, what we are going to do here, though, is I actually want to do on this particular, uh, on the TSC, which I believe is panel two, and up at the top on each of these windows, if I move this out of your way, and you can see at the top of these touch screens, like for example here, you can see there it says panel two. Okay, let's bring this back up so you guys can see everything. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set panel two to full screen. Because I actually do want this, because it is a horizontal menu, I do want this to take up the whole window. There's no reason not to. The next thing that I'm going to do is this. This is the critical part. Touch enabled. I'm going to select that. And now when I do so, let me come back over here and hide this large window for you guys. And let's come on down to the TSC so you guys can see it as well. Okay, now something ironically enough that I just discovered that seems to be a problem with this. Is this, for the touch to be enabled, it looks like it needs to be enabled on all screens. I'm not quite sure why, but it definitely was causing a problem. If I only did one or the other, the touchscreen was not functioning. However, if I enable touch on both, which it really shouldn't matter as far as a usage perspective, we can then, if we go back to our taking a look at the TSC here, you can now see that I'm able to use it as designed. Now, unfortunately for the soft keys, you would still need to click or bind something to it, which is not the end of the world. I believe we can actually do that even from the class echo if memory serves. So let me actually check that for a second to see if that's legitimate. So if I click on MFD and if I go to PFD, no, that doesn't seem to work, but that's something that I can look at at a later time. Now, anyways, but you guys can see that I can now, I am doing this all by touch. Oops. Did not mean to hit M. Let's go backspace. KTUS. Enter. And let's say we are taking her over to Los Angeles as an example. Now, one of the things that you can also do with this is you can adjust the sensitivity of the touch. So if we go to preferences, we can go to touch settings. Amount of time in milliseconds to wait for touch inactivity before input focus goes back to the game window. Basically means that once you touch a screen, okay, technically you are clicking out of the sim. So the simulator or the pop-out manager is going to recognize it and it's going to say, how long do you want me to wait? So basically, if I stop touching the touch screens for half a second, the, the pop-out manager tool will automatically refocus the simulator as the primary window, which is extremely handy, okay? So the next thing that we want to do is I can look at touch down, touch up delay. Amount of time in milliseconds to delay touch down and then touch up event when operating touch enabled panel. If your touch is not registering consistently, increasing the value will help. So for example, let's go ahead and bring this up to 200 and see what happens. And we'll close this. I'm going to move this off the window now. And now that definitely seems to have made a pretty significant difference. A couple more things that I want to go over very, very quickly, guys, is you do have the ability, as you can see here, I have them checked to hide and unhide the title bars. If you wish to change the size, you simply click in the window that you wish to size and you can either adjust it here or you can do massive adjustments 
or you can also, if necessary, to give yourself a head start, you can simply click and drag it around to position, go to your corners, drag them out, and then do any fine tuning that you'd like to do from there. Um, certainly makes things much, much easier. Again, you can have the always on top option. So for example, I was talking to you guys earlier about what I did with the longitude. Essentially what I did is on the PFD, is an example here would be that I, let me minimize this for now. Go to the PFD and let's do a split screen. So I did something like this on the PFD for the longitude because the longitude, the TSC is vertical. Uh, it is not horizontal as it is in the uh, TBM. And I did something similar to this, obviously much more refined where all of the PFD was shown except for the map. And then the TSC on the longitude was covering up everything on the map that you're seeing on the PFD. Uh, so I was able to use a single touch, touch screen for both features, PFD. So it, it was something like this, for example. I mean, you can still see the usage there. I have all the PFD functionality here. And then if I want to, I can still use my touchscreen controller over here. And this is actually working quite well. So let's say that would probably be more like 75 knots. I typed that too fast. I was getting greedy there. And you have your functionality all on one screen. Again, making things significantly easier to manage with these aircraft that have the touchscreen controllers. This also works for anything such as the Airbus or the uh, 737. You can pop out the MCDUs and the FMS or FMC. Um, so again, that functionality would be there as well. I also want to remind you guys of something called Space Desk. If you have never heard of it, please make sure that you Google it and look excuse me, on your Android or iPhone or iPad uh, stores and see if it is available. I know it is available on Android and I believe it is available for Apple, but don't quote me as I do not own an Apple device. What Space Desk does is allows you to over Wi-Fi, add a monitor. That monitor can be your cell phone, a tablet, a Kindle, whatever it may be, as long as Space Desk can be installed on it. This means that you can turn your iPhone, Apple, whatever it may be, Android, Kindle, etc., into a touchscreen controller for Microsoft Flight Simulator, which makes entry of your flight plan significantly easier, and it makes it a lot easier to manipulate the different screens as we are moving around with all of this stuff. It is definitely one of those things that is super handy in these particular scenarios. Um, it definitely increases the immersion, you guys. I think that's the, probably one of the biggest things that I take from it is it makes the immersion significantly better. The Longitude and the TBM 930 actually have touchscreen controllers. So being able to actually use those is quite an awesome experience when you're looking at this kind of behavior. All right, well, as always guys, I hope you guys have found this video useful and uh, stay safe and healthy and I will see you guys in the next one.